Rumor has it that she found out he was cheating on her thanks to a jar of jam. According to a new report from Page Six, Shakira came home from a trip one day and discovered that some of the jam in her fridge had been eaten. The reason this made her suspicious was because her husband at the time, Gerard Piquet, doesn't actually like jam. Not only that, but apparently her kids hate it too, which of course means that there had to be one other person in the house who was dipping into the jam. And apparently she made a low-key reference to this incident in the music video for her song called Te Felicito, where she opens a fridge and finds Alejandro's head on a plate. When asked about the moment in an interview on This Morning, Shakira described it as, to find out the truth I go into the refrigerator, which is not exactly subtle. Now Twitter is reacting to the news in the only sensible way, making memes. Someone posted a video of the singer walking around in what looks like a giant red crystal cave, and they captioned it, Shakira inside the jam jar investigating how much was missing. Even the official Duolingo Twitter account got in on the joke, and they posted a photo of a green jar of jam with the caption PK's tears. But one user's tweet sums it up best. Risa Brown wrote, I found my ex was cheating from a smoothie receipt in his jar. Shakira found out from a jar of jam. I don't care how crazy we look or sound, when something doesn't feel right, women will always find out. But that's not all. The internet has now found yet another reason to hate on PK. A clip of the football star on a Zoom interview has recently resurfaced online, and a fan noticed that Clara Chia was featured in the background of his home. This is a huge deal because when the interview was done in 2021, he and Shakira were very much still together. At the time, she was away traveling with their children, nine-year-old Milan and seven-year-old Sasha. Following the revelation, Shakira was reportedly devastated to learn that this woman clearly felt at home in the house that they shared with their children. To make matters even worse, according to several sources, PK's parents knew that their son was unfaithful to Shakira and they never did anything to prevent it. Even her mother-in-law allegedly treated her badly at first and insisted that she was too old for her son. Now new photos have come out of PK's parents parents walking arm in arm with Clara Chia, and they both seem very happy with their son's new partner. So of course these photos would be quite shocking, considering that Shakira's mother-in-law was the one who assured her of PK's fidelity. Now it looks like she has fully welcomed his new girlfriend into the family. So now we're starting to see why she put a terrifying life-size witch mannequin on her balcony, and positioned it so that it faces her ex-mother-in-law's house. Not only that, but residents in her neighborhood have reported hearing her new diss track blasting at full volume from her home, so it was probably loud enough to reach the entire street. When photos of the spooky witch mannequin went viral, fans were not exactly sure how to react. Some people thought it was hilarious and labeled Shakira as a petty queen. Others thought that she was taking it way too far. But as we learn more and more about this cheating scandal, we'll come to understand how everything went down and why Shakira deserves to be angry. Seth Rogen's first book called Your Book is definitely going to be a big tea spiller for Hollywood. The book is filled with interesting encounters that he has had during his time in the land of celebrities. Although one of the biggest and strangest interactions was when he met Tom Cruise in 2006 with Judd Apatow. During the making of Knocked Up, Tom had invited the pair over to his home for a meeting. Cruz had an interest in getting into more comedic acting, so we thought who better to learn from than Judd, an established comedic director, and Seth, a stand-up comedian and successful actor as well. According to Rogan, they met with Tom for about five hours and spoke about the industry and the movies that Cruz enjoyed. In the book, he says it was all totally normal until it wasn't. You see, about four hours or so into the meeting, the conversation began to shift towards how Tom was being negatively perceived by the general public. In 2006, Tom's fame was at an all-time high, and on top of that, his relationship with Katie Holmes led to one of the most famous interview moments in television history. And Seth Rogen also mentioned that he had met Katie Holmes as well when visiting the home and said, she had a vague, please rescue me from this place look on her face. As for the way that Tom felt about the negative attention, Seth writes, well yeah, they're making it seem like I'm losing my mind. There's a coordinated effort to make it appear that way. And when Rogan asked him who would do such a thing, Tom blamed the pharmaceutical industry, explaining that his exposure of their fraud has cost them so much money that they're this desperate. They're scrambling and they're doing everything they can to discredit him so that he won't hurt their sales anymore. Now, to really understand why Tom would have been paranoid about Big Pharma back then, we have to go back to 2005 when he appeared on Access Hollywood. On the show, Cruz called Brooke Shields irresponsible for taking antidepressants to battle her postpartum depression, a statement that he would later apologize to her for in 2016. Regardless, he said what he said, and then would later get into a very heated argument with Matt Lauer when Matt questioned him on this. Matt said that he knew people on antidepressants, and said that it had actually helped them. But in response, Cruz fired back, saying that Adderall and Ritalin were street drugs. And going back to Seth Rogen's book, though, for a moment, he also flat out said to Tom, Big Pharma made you jump on Oprah's couch? To which Tom replied, They edited it to make it look so much worse than it was. They do that all the time. You should see what they do to my friend Louis Farrakhan. 
Rogan would later write, Of all the strange sentences I've heard in my life, this one coming out of Tom Cruise's mouth is in the top three. At that moment though, Judd Apatow could not bite his tongue any further and said to Cruise that Farrakhan has said a lot of blatantly anti-Semitic things. But Tom insisted that he was a great guy and the only reason they think that is because of the media, despite Apatow giving an example of him comparing Jews to cockroaches. For which Tom replied, No, see, that's the media. They're distorting all of it. Take my religion, for example. Scientology. They make it seem so effing different than it is. If you just gave me like an hour to tell you about it, you'd be like, no effing way, that's what Scientology is? No effing way. In just one hour, I could completely change your minds. Although at that point, they had both already been there for about five hours, so they respectfully declined to learn more about the Church of Scientology and promptly left the property. So far, no representatives for Tom Cruise have responded to these claims, but make sure to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on all of this. We have to talk about how Shakira got revenge on Gerard Piquet. She's apparently sparked a family feud after putting up a terrifying life-size witch mannequin that's standing up on her balcony so that it faces her ex-mother-in-law's house. According to a Spanish newspaper called Marca, Piquet's mother was furious when she noticed a black witch on a broomstick mounted on the terrace of Shakira's house in Barcelona. She reportedly asked one of Shakira's staff to turn the witch around so it wouldn't face towards her house, which is on the exact same street. The singer also released a savage new diss track aimed at her ex and his mother, which was released earlier this week. Residents in Shakira's neighborhood have reported hearing the song blasting at full volume from her home. In the song, which is completely in Spanish, she sings the line, you left my mother-in-law as my neighbor, with the press at my door and the debt to the tax man. Twitter then flooded with reports over the song and the scary looking witch, with many fans celebrating her as a petty queen. It has been rumored that PK's mom knew about his infidelity all along and tried to convince Shakira that nothing was happening as the two of them became very close over the years and once had a great relationship. Not only that, but it's also been reported that their feud really started when Shakira's mother-in-law readily welcomed her son's new girlfriend. So if all these things were true, you can see why there's such a big rift between them now. But did Shakira go too far by putting up that giant witch or not far enough? In her diss track, the singer also takes a swing at her ex's new 23-year-old girlfriend, Clara Chia. The lyrics were pretty harsh when translated to English. She referenced as Clara's age and says, I'm worth two 22 year olds. You traded a Ferrari for a Twingo. You traded a Rolex for a Casio. Then at another point in the song, she says, she's got the name of a good person. Clearly that's not how it sounds. Shakira also takes a dig at PK of course and says, a lot of gyms, but your brain works a little bit too. A she wolf like me isn't for rookies. And I was out of your league, which is why you're with someone just like you. Back in June, fans were shocked when Shakira announced her split from the football star after they spent 11 years together. She told Elle magazine that she's going through one of the most difficult, darkest hours of her life and insisted that the situation has been rough for her and her children. She said, I try to do it and to protect them because that's my number one mission in life. But they hear things in school from their friends or they come across some disagreeable, unpleasant news online and it just affects them, you know? She went on to say, what's also real is a disappointment to see something as sacred and special as I thought the relationship I had with my kid's father and see that turned into something vulgarized and cheapened by the media. When Shakira was asked about PK being linked to another woman and reports that she was surprised by their relationship ending, she said, I can only say that I put everything I had into this relationship and my family. She also pointed out that she relocated to Barcelona and put her own career on the back burner to support him and be with their children. She called it a sacrifice of love. So with that said, it's actually quite sad to see that their relationship has ended, given that for many years, Shakira put her relationship first while she supported her husband and children. Aside from the cheating scandal, her new song also mentions her ongoing problems with the Spanish revenue authorities and the $15 million tax fraud case that she's currently stuck in. As we know, she's looking at a possible prison term of eight years and a fine of $23.5 million should she be found guilty. According to the prosecutor's office document that was revealed in July, she was accused of failing to pay taxes between 2012 and 2014, a period where she claimed 
claims that she did not live in Spain. The diss track has racked up more than 63 million views in 24 hours, making it the most watched new Latin song in YouTube history. Now I'll admit that at first glance, I too was completely fooled by this brilliant Tom Cruise deepfake. I mean, for starters, the content of the video is PG, but it's really just unsettling, and it also puts you in a world where this is possible. You don't even have to imagine what it would be like if Tom Cruise had a TikTok account because, well, this guy just nailed it. Deepfaking is this fascinating and yet still terrifying piece of new technology that seems to only be getting more and more accurate. I'm sure you can only imagine how many problems this is going to pose in the future with authenticating video footage to make sure that it's not a deepfake. And the better the technology gets, the harder and harder it's going to be to tell the difference. This could be applied to make celebrities or politicians say things they wouldn't normally ever say. What's worse is that you don't even need to be able to do a good impression of these public figures anymore. If it's someone that has been in the media for decades, let's say, chances are there are more than enough videos or audio files of them speaking that an AI system could help you piece together words to form new sentences. I mean, really sit with that possibility and realize that the early stages are happening now. Some believe this deepfaking method has actually already been used in a political sense. If I can stray away from this Tom Cruise story for a moment, there was a bizarre and terrifying case where the president of Gabon, Ali Bongo, was accused of putting out a deepfaked video. For a while, he had been out of the public eye, reportedly receiving medical treatment in Saudi Arabia and in London. Slowly but surely, the public started growing suspicious about the president's well-being, and the fact that the government would not answer anyone's questions certainly did not help. Later on, it was announced that he had suffered from a stroke but remained in good shape. Now, every New Year's, it was customary for the president to address the people, and despite doubts, the president's advisors promised that he would deliver. However, when the video came out, it only raised more concerns because some people believed that it was deepfaked. Just the belief that they were being fooled was enough to cause a military coup, albeit an unsuccessful one, but a coup nonetheless. And that is the real danger here, folks. This kind of technology should be disturbing to you. This technology is becoming so advanced so fast that some people are even calling for governments to put limitations on deepfaking in order to protect people. I mean, sure, this technology is great for when Martin Scorsese wants to, you know, make Robert De Niro look like a younger version of himself, but in the hands of the public, or in the hands of the government even, it's just a bad idea. It hasn't even been available for that long, and we've already witnessed this uh, tremendous butterfly effect of it happen so quickly. It's, I mean, it's hard to even fathom the potential and number of possibilities that this technology has to be used for evil. I mean, its greatest strength is deception, which is something that governments are trying to do on the regular, and even if it's a weak deep fake, like I said, it's, its very existence now makes people question what is real and what isn't real, which you can argue will also be a very detrimental thing to the human psyche alone. Although I never want to be the person that is only looking at the negative side of things. So on a positive note, TikTok user Deep Tom Cruise is the perfect example of how this technology can be used to entertain people. I mean, he has everything nailed, too, with this Tom Cruise character. He has the voice down, the mannerisms, and he even acts out scenarios that you could totally see Tom Cruise in. So there's not even a detachment from this being just a deep fake. You know those low effort face swap ones where they're just like in their kitchen or whatever? This guy's actually put a lot of thought and effort into this and it's paying off. Although some people speculated that the voice may be artificial as well because it was just too good. What's up, TikTok? You guys cool if I play some sports? I love it. More for the audio experience. As much as the momentum. Hey, listen up, sports and TikTok fans. If you like what you're seeing, just wait till what's coming next. I mean, it's still scary how accurate this looks, and this has been expressed in the comment sections on more than one occasion. One user writes, These deepfakes are getting worryingly good. Worryingly, I love that word. How the heck can we trust what we see on TV? And they're exactly right, and that is going to be the interesting thing to watch over the course of the next five years. I mean, we are going to see more and more people just become overly cautious and untrusting of pretty much everything. 
Cuban American superstar Gloria Estefan apparently has no regrets about not performing in the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show, but she did have something to say about actress and musician Jennifer Lopez's comments on the experience. Typically, there is one performer for the halftime show, but instead, JLo performed with Shakira. During an interview with Andy Cohen, Estefan said, Look, this is the bottom line. You have very little time, like 12 minutes or something, to get things on and off the set. So, could you do it? with one person? Yes. But I think they wanted to throw a Miami and Latin extravaganza and they tried to pack it as much as possible. Estefan, who had declined being the third performer on the show, continued on saying, Okay, and imagine what JLo would have said if I was the third performer. I literally would come out, do shake your body and conga and go out. It was their moment. Plus, I didn't want to go on a diet in December. So what would JLo have said if Estefan had been the third performer? It became clear in the documentary Halftime which was made about Lopez's experience with the performance that she was not happy at all about being told she would be splitting her time with Shakira. Her manager Benny Medina said, Typically you have one headliner at a Super Bowl. That headliner constructs a show and should they choose to have other guests, that's their choice. It was an insult to say you needed two Latinas to do the job that one artist historically has done. And he wasn't the only one who felt insulted. JLo saying, We have six minutes. We have 30 seconds of a song. And if we take a minute, that's it. We've got five left. But there's got to be certain songs that we sing though. We have to have our singing moments. It's not going to be a dance review. We have to sing our message. This is the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. It was the worst idea in the world. In the documentary, which you can watch on Netflix, the two performers are seen talking to each other and discussing what will happen for the upcoming show. Jennifer saying, they said 12 minutes. I got kind of a good confirmation that we could have an extra minute or two. So now we're at like 13, 14 minutes. I think, Shakira, what we should have is you should have half the time and I should have half. If it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have f***ing done. Yeah, she clearly wasn't happy about anything in regards to the halftime show and how it was being run. And Estefan saw that and seemed to call her out about her bad attitude in regards to the performance. Obviously glad that she had declined the offer. This isn't the first time that Jennifer Lopez has fallen under controversy for things that she's said about other performers. Some fans thinking that her response to sharing the halftime show made her seem entitled. She's thrown her own shade at a few different celebrities, so let's run through a few of them. She said about Gwyneth Paltrow, tell me what she's been in. I swear to god I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. She also dissed Winona Ryder, saying, in Hollywood, she's revered. She gets nominated for Oscars. But I've never heard anyone in the public or among my friends say, oh, I love her. She also accused Salma Hayek of lying, saying, she's a sexy bombshell and those are the kinds of roles she does. I do all kinds of different things. It makes me laugh when she says she got offered Selena, which was an outright lie. If that's what she does to get herself publicity, then that's her thing. So yeah, if you're gonna be giving shade, you gotta be able to take it too. Tax fraud. Probably among one of the easiest crimes to commit accidentally. Unless you're like me and you still get your mom to do your taxes, then you probably spend tax season in immense amounts of stress, praying that you don't get audited and have made some small mistake somewhere that's gonna land you with an offense. As it turns out, it's not just us regular people who have to deal with the stresses of the Internal Revenue Service. Shakira has recently found herself in trouble for allegedly not paying taxes in the country of Spain. She was originally charged four years ago in 2018 and we have just recently seen a development in the case. So let's recap the situation and take a look at what Shakira has been up to lately. The prosecutors are accusing Shakira of having not paid almost 15 million dollars in taxes between 2012 and 2014. They say that it mostly has to do with where she was living. While her official residence was in the Bahamas, they allege that she spent more than half the time living in Barcelona and thus should have been paying taxes taxes to the country. Barcelona being where she lived with 11 year partner Gerard Pique with whom she had two children. The prosecutors are calling for her to be sentenced to a whopping 8 years and 2 months in prison and to pay an around 24 million dollar fine. She was offered a plea deal but apparently rejected.
rejected it, saying that she feels confident in standing up for herself in court. Her publicist accused the Spanish tax agency of violating her rights, saying she has always cooperated and abided by the law, demonstrating impeccable conduct as an individual and a taxpayer. They also said that Shakira trusts her innocence and chooses to leave the issue in the hands of the law, though it looks like Shakira herself hasn't made any form of public statement about the situation. Due to her celebrity status, it's likely that even if Shakira was sentenced to 8 years in prison, she wouldn't be going through the same process as the regular person, and probably would be awarded certain luxuries, especially due to the fact that this is a totally non-violent crime. She's apparently prepared as earlier this week she deposited the amount that she is set to owe as well as 3 million extra in interest. As expected, most people who have spoken out about the situation on social media seem to be fully in support of the performer and have even made lighthearted jokes about it, most of them about her being found innocent in court because her hips don't lie. Other messages included things like, Damn, I heard Spain is trying to send Shakira to prison for 8 years over alleged tax fraud. I stand with Shakira, and let Shakira do tax fraud in peace. Whether or not she actually knowingly committed tax fraud is still unknown at this time. Now let's quickly cover her recent split with husband Gerard Pique. They lived in Barcelona together, being in a relationship for 11 years and having two children before very recently ending things. It seems that things between the two haven't ended too terribly though, as Gerard sent this message to Shakira prior to a meeting that will take place next week. I wish you the best. The important thing is the happiness and welfare of our children. Child custody can be a big deal, especially in high profile cases like this, but it seems clear that Shakira is going to be taking both children to live with her in Miami, though it does appear that Gerard has a few conditions before he goes forward with agreeing to this. He says he wants 5 tickets a year to fly first class to Miami and visit the children, and a small loan of $400,000 to help him pay a debt, though what the debt is, isn't clear. As I said before, the two are apparently going to be having a meeting next Next week to go over the details. A Spanish judge has ordered Shakira to stand trial for alleged tax evasion, saying that she failed to pay $15 million in taxes on income that she earned in the span of two years. A Spanish prosecutor is now seeking a prison term of eight years and a fine of $23.5 million should she be found guilty. So they are pushing for the highest possible sentence over six separate counts of tax fraud. According to the prosecutor's office document that was revealed in July, Shakira is accused of failing to pay taxes between 2012 and 2014, a period in which she claims that she did not live in Spain. However, the singer has been profiled in a Spanish investigative TV show, and the tax authorities consider this case to be the clearest example of tax fraud they have ever seen. Shakira claimed to be residing in the Bahamas throughout these two years, but was caught by both journalists and the paparazzi, who were actually able to demonstrate that she was living in Barcelona. Tax Tax inspectors only needed to look at time stamped photographs of her to determine that they had solid proof that she was spending most of her time in Spain. When the tax agency became suspicious, they began to track her life in Barcelona and started with the hotspots that she frequented, like her hairdresser, where she went every week. In addition, Shakira was also caught visiting beauty salons and gyms, as evidenced by her credit card statements. It also didn't help that her parents had moved to Barcelona at the end of 2012, so it makes sense that she would want to stay close to home with her two young children. In a new interview with Elle magazine, Shakira doubled down on the denial. She said, While Gerard and I were dating, I was on a world tour. I spent more than 240 days outside of Spain, so there was no way I qualified as a resident. The Spanish tax authorities saw that I was dating a Spanish citizen, and they started to salivate. It's clear that they wanted to go after that money no matter what, but the tax chiefs still came after me, with their eyes on the prize. So Shakira claims the accusations by the Spanish government are false saying, I've paid everything they claimed I owed, even before they filed a lawsuit. So as of today, I owe zero to them. The 45-year-old insists that she didn't spend enough time in Spain to be considered a resident of the country, and that she was advised by one of the four biggest tax specialist firms in the world, that she was doing things correctly and transparently from day one. The pop star instead accused the Spanish government of applying pressure in the media and using a salacious press campaign to turn people against her. She praised her friends for for supporting her during this difficult time, and said, I'm confident that I have enough proof to support my case and that justice will prevail in my favor. But Shakira is clearly being put through the ringer right now. In fact, she will likely remember September.
September 27th as one of the worst days in her life. She failed to show up for a planned meeting with her estranged husband and Barcelona defender Gerard Piquet in order to discuss the terms of their separation and the future living arrangements of their children. The meeting with Piquet and his lawyers was scheduled to take place in the afternoon, but only a few hours before that meeting, a Spanish judge in charge of examining court number two had ordered the opening of her trial for alleged tax evasion. Because of the timing, Shakira was not able to appear at the meeting with her ex, which still had to go on without her. With her lawyers discussing where her children would be living and what would be expected of the partner who has visitation rights. This led Shakira to have what looked like an emotional breakdown in her car, where she was photographed looking distraught and in low spirits. Back in June, fans were shocked when she announced her split from Piquet after 11 years together. Their breakup was plagued with allegations that the footballer had been cheating on her throughout their relationship. She told Elle magazine that she is going through one of the most difficult and darkest hours of her life, saying the situation has been tough for her and their children. She said, I try to do it and protect them because that's my number one mission in life. But then they hear things in school from their friends or they come across disagreeable, unpleasant news online and it just affects them, you know? It's really upsetting for two kids who are trying to process their parents' separation. When Shakira was asked about PK being linked to other women and reports that she was surprised by their relationship ending, she said, I can only say that I put everything I had into this relationship and my family. According to Spanish newspaper Marca, the other woman was 23 year old Clara Chia, who was dating one of PK's friends at the time. He was allegedly smitten with her the first time he saw her, and they exchanged phone numbers and started dating in secret. So it certainly has been a rough couple of months for Shakira to say the least. Alright, so what on earth is going on between Tom Cruise and Shakira? The two of them were photographed hanging out together at the Formula One Grand Prix in Miami over the weekend. They spent some time together on the starting grid and were seen chatting in a private hospitality suite. A source then spoke to Page Six and said, he is extremely interested in pursuing her and there is chemistry there. Shakira needs a soft pillow to fall on and that could be Tom. But that's not all. Apparently he was so taken by her that he sent her flowers. A video of them chatting in the VIP section has since gone viral on TikTok. As the news made its way across the internet, a ton of people put their two cents in about the potential relationship. So many fans were leaving comments telling her to run away and saying that Tom is just not good for her. Clearly most people don't approve of this potential relationship. Although there were also a few jokes about it. Someone wrote, he's going on an impossible mission to make sure those hips really don't lie. And if this does turn out to be true, Tom and Shakira will be one of the most unexpected couples to come out of 2023. They might even be more random than Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet, or Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy. But there is a good reason why her fans feel so protective of her. As we know, Shakira just split up from her longtime boyfriend Gerard Piquet after allegations that he was having an affair with his now girlfriend Clara Chia. For months, news of Piquet's infidelity dominated the headlines. At one point, it was reported that Shakira found out about it thanks to a jar of jam. And that was enough to send fans into a tailspin. The story goes that she came home from a trip one day and discovered that some of the jam in her fridge had been eaten. This was a little sus given that PK doesn't actually like jam and neither do their kids. So of course there had to be one other person in the house who was dipping into the jam. The scandal culminated in the release of a savage diss track calling out everyone involved in the affair. Even Shakira's own mother-in-law who allegedly knew about it the whole time. Almost one year later and Shakira is finally starting to feel like herself again. There's also another reason that fans don't want to see her with Tom Cruise. And it's fairly obvious. It all boils down to the fact that his history with women is not so easily forgotten. Though it's been over three decades, his marriage to Nicole Kidman is still one of the most talked about in Hollywood. As we know, it was far from perfect. Looking back on that time in her life, Nicole said that she felt isolated during her marriage and it was the loneliest that she's ever been. It was only after she left him that she really found her freedom. Think about that iconic photo of her leaving her attorney's office, jumping for joy after their divorce was finalized. Tom's divorce from Katie Holmes was even messier. The major reason for their split was Katie's aversion to raising their daughter Suri as a Scientologist. Eventually Katie won sole custody and to this day it appears that Tom hasn't seen his daughter in years. In the end he was awarded visitation rights but he chose not to keep in contact with her regardless. In contrast Shakira's separation hasn't defined her in the same way. If anything she was met with an outpouring of support from fans and celebrities alike. Yes it's been a tough year for her but she also seems like she's done her fair share of healing since the breakup. She recently accepted the Woman of the Year award at the Latin Women in Music Gala and when she took to the stage she said, there comes a time in the life of every woman where she no longer depends on someone else to love and accept herself just as she is. A time when the 
search for someone else is replaced by the search for oneself. A time when the desire to be perfect is replaced by the desire to be authentic and where finding someone who is faithful is less important than being faithful to ourselves. So it sounds like she's positive about the future and she has every reason to be. Yeah.